about the Naked Truth tonight uh-huh. because, you know, it's one of those shows where you have to deal with the things that are really, really naked, and you have to deal with the truth yeah. of the matter. Yeah. Um, we have some very tragic things, as, as, as I would put it, that have happened over the uh, past couple of days, and uh, we want to discuss them. We want to, you know, open the line up for you calling if you have any questions. Uh, we want our resident expert to help us understand things and a kind of process, where do we go from here? And I'm sure if you're anywhere in the United States, um, even if you're anywhere internationally, you have heard about the recent incident that took place in Paris. It was basically a massacre of 129 people uh, that were uh, innocently uh, going about their business, um, entertaining themselves, feeding themselves, uh, spending time with friends, family, whatever it was, uh, when they were rudely and um, surprisingly abruptly abruptly, uh, interrupted by um, hostility from two men who have remained unknown and have not been found, from my understanding, and we can clear that up. Um, but we're going to talk more about that. We want to discuss it. We want, you know, we want to be able to really get a hold of our feelings about it, how we should feel, where we should go from here, how do we get here is probably one of the bigger questions. So we want to bring our resident expert who's written several books and been in several reality shows. He is one of the founders of the Manhood Tour that should be coming to the to your city soon. Um, and is my brother from another mother. Uh, and Cherry is in Africa, so she's not going to laugh at this at this moment. But this is uh, none other than Mr. Hassani Pettiford. How are you, brother? How are you? I'm doing phenomenal. How are you? I am phenomenal, and you look phenomenal. You look chic today. You look like you know. Well, I see that. You have the California look. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean. I'm doing great under the circumstances. You know, interestingly enough, to the point of the topic today, I literally just found out about this today. Okay, get out of here. Just today. You know, it's and I and I forget, and we have to make sure that our listening audience knows, because uh, I'm sure Anthony knows that Hassani does not watch TV. So you, you're so uh, uh, up you on most things. You're so well, you know, uh, versed on on a lot of subjects. So people just can't imagine that you're not tied to a TV. Well, he has a television, but you don't even have the basic channels, right? You gotta get your stuff through a box or something, right? Right. I don't. I have Hulu, and Netflix, wow. and I could watch segments of news that have already happened. But you have to be intentional to watch it. So I really rely on the internet a lot. And so, you know, uh, I can pick up CNN, MSNBC, things of that nature, and then alternative media sources, which I think is key, particularly when dealing with an international issue like this, because what happens when you have uh, top level media companies that disseminate information, a lot of times it could be crafted, it could be scripted, and it may not be consistent with all of the alternative media sources. And then with the power of technology, everybody having a cell phone and everybody being their own individual journalist, you have all types of information you have to kind of filter through to get to the to the core of it all. That is so true. And uh, a friend of mine reminded me that today um, because I was actually conversing with them about the whole incident. They had a whole different perspective. And it was because they didn't rely on just your regular news channels and your popular news sources uh, for information. Um, but one of the things, and Anthony, you know, I want to welcome Anthony Washington to the program. Oh, thank you. Tim it's Brown. good to be here. <laughs> he, is our, he, is our, he Oh, he's, a, he's hyped up. He is our hot topic expert. Oh, and uh, he brings us all the news. Matter of fact, he was telling us that Patty LaBelle has some pies out of the store. <laughs> That's right. That we need to check out. Make you want to slap uh, your mama. Make you want to slap your mama. But actually, um, I... To, to your credit, um, Hassani, I woke up one morning not knowing either, and when I found out, it was that I, I posted on Facebook, and you see, it was a sad feeling. It was a feeling of fear. It was a feeling of anger all at once. I didn't know, you know, how to really, you know, um, come to grips with it at that moment because it caught me off guard. And then Anthony was telling me that, you know, one of the, um, there were several students from the United States that were out there that were also 
or and or injured and it was just like wow you know their ki their parents sending their kids across the country for um you know for school abroad and they have to hear this news and they're thinking uh, she's in paris i mean we, of all places so um the question i have for you is how did we get here and when i say that is how isis is is rumored to have been the organization that carried out this massacre how did ISIS come about, and and who are they, and 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 why are we involved with them on the level of terrorism? Well, the state of Iran and Syria is where ISIS primarily is housed, if you will. That's like their stomping grounds. But you know, it depends once again on who you ask, because some would suggest that a lot of these terrorist organizations are boogeyman organizations that are secretly being funded. Uh, by uh, heads of state or by, you know, the United States, if you will, amongst many other countries. Think about it. You know, at one time you heard Hezbollah. That's all you heard in terms of a terrorist organization. Then there were others. You know, once we were able to successfully kill Osama bin Laden, you know, and that particular terrorist organization died down, that's when ISIS rose up. And so it seems as though there always has to be an enemy. There always has to be an adversary that they point the finger at and make responsible for every act of terrorism that takes place. Now, if you remember, just a couple of weeks ago, right. when we were dealing with the incident that took place in the United States, act of terror, we talked about how there were so many drills that were being ta that were taking place the same day of the actual incident. Remember that? Yes. Okay. So as I was doing research for this particular event, once again, drills being done on it, all around the country leading up to this particular event. And so there's a term called false flags. A false flag is when an act of terrorism is blamed on an outside organization, but it is state-sponsored. In essence, it is done for many purposes. One of the reasons why people think that 9-11 was done so that they could take our rights away. Because when you're in fear and in terror and you want to be protected, you're willing to give up certain liberties for more security, for more protection. And so whether we're dealing with the international crisis that's taking place in Syria right now and whether I, I, there's just so many different theories out there that it's, it's kind of hard to say what is the actual fact right. because too many conflicting stories. But we do know that 100 and what was it, 29 yes. people yes. lost their lives you know, to whether it was a terrorist organization or state sponsored, it's just sick. How do we get here? Because the devil is real and he's mad and he's busy and he knows he's going down and he's trying to take as many people down with him. And so that's why it's so critically important that we not just go to church and show up on Sunday morning, but we have real relationship with God. Because when you have relationship with God, there is a sense of safety and protection. That is so true. That is so true. And, and some people say that United States, and, and, and pretty much what you're saying, but in a, in a different way, is that the United States was the cause of these terrorism, terrorist organizations birthing um, themselves because of the fact that they felt that United States came into their territories, took advantage of them, thus leaving them in a situation where they were no longer able to survive in their own uh, areas well. And so they became desperate and as a result of desperate acts. They wanted to, you know, get back at us. So some people say that this is what has happened routinely and historically. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but then the United States doesn't cop up to that. Well, that's very true because the biggest terrorists of them all have been major superpowers like the United States, like England. You know, one thing to say about England, as an example, is that the sun never sets on the kingdom because they own countries and nations from one you know, part of the world to the next. And so because of their militarization, because of all of the acts of terror and taking over countries, and that's what they've done. And America is nothing more than a major empire that has influence around the world, you know, not by democratic means, but by war and bloodshed. And now you ask, where does this all come from? Well, it's payback time. It was so interesting because Malcolm X was, was basically kicked out of the nation of Islam for saying that the chickens have come home to roost when JFK was killed. Well, what he was suggesting is, well, listen, as a result of all of the hatred and all of the murder and all of the annihilation that America has been responsible around the world, it's now coming back on us. It's the law of reciprocity. You reap what it is that you sow. And here we have another example of these organizations that are sick and tired. Because think about it. There are many 
militaries aren't designed to engage in warfare with us, they would lose. So terrorism is more effective for them because they're able to, what, target innocent people, target particular locations that thus pull nations or their militaries into major conflict. But how can you defeat a terrorist? How can you co- defeat right. people who participate in guerrilla warfare? It's almost impossible. Right. And that's interesting because it goes to your point, Anthony, that you said earlier, as, and I didn't think about this, is that they target, they target certain areas where the people are defenseless. Right. So you say like right. your area like Paris, where Anthony pointed out they're not, they don't have guns and readily available to them uh, as citizens. So they have to rely on the police. And if the police are not there at that moment, then there's no protection. Whereas if you come to, let's say, Los Angeles, Texas, or any... Arizona. S- yeah, Arizona. I mean, people are carrying guns. The person next to you could have a gun. So, you know, you, you, you just, I mean, so to actually plan something in those environments would be maybe a little difficult, or maybe there will be a slight de- deterrence. So what, what's your thought on that, Hassani? Well, yeah, I mean, well, you know, whether people are carrying guns or not carrying guns, if you have random individuals who are citizens of any particular state who have guns, there's still not a unified, organized force, you know, that, that can wage war against this paramilitary force that we know as ISIS. So... Because they operate in these cells and because they have just an army of people and they're spreading not only in, you know, uh, Syria and Iran, but around the world, they're everywhere. They're able to have organized, structured, strategic attacks that are successful. And with the power of technology and with unlimited funds at their exposure, they're able to do some traumatic things. Yes. And, you know, the the other thing is, is that. I guess when people hear of these incidents, the first thing that happens to them is that they they become fearful. And like you said, that that's the that may be the objective. But what do you do when you hear of these things happening and you wonder if it's going to happen where you are? And and the question I have to you is, do you think that something like that could happen in the United States? Uh, on that yeah. level. On that level. <laughs> The, the quick answer to the to the latter question is yes, it can happen to the United States, and it has happened. It hasn't happened. For instance, when you look at the timeline of what has happened, I think the incident started out around 8:30 and went all the way into the wee hours of the morning. Right. Just incidents right. taking place all over the you know country of France. Um, however, we've had that, but it's been out over months or over years. You know, whether it's the Boston bombing, whether it's the Oklahoma bomb. I mean, it's happened. Could it happen in that degree? Absolutely, because you have to understand that the FBI, and not, not the CIA, but the FBI constantly is um, uh, seizing particular disasters that would take place before they would take place. There are cells, Islamic cells, all over the United States that are constantly plotting incidences just like that, whether it's schools, whether it's movie theaters, restaurants, churches. We're seeing it happen, but because America is humongous, Spread out. think about it. Yeah. France is like the size of one of our states. Oh, you know, right. So they can terrorize an entire country in a few different locations, whereas if they tried to do that in the United States, it would just have to be so much of a much larger mission to accomplish. So it, when, when if you have someone who obviously has a beef, I mean, it's clear they have a beef with us, and it's clear that they're bringing us into basically a state of war. I mean, we, we I, I don't see how we can say that we're not in war against them at this point in time. Um, but... W- how do you how do you deal with something like this? If you were President Obama, what would you do? Because it's not really the fact that we can beat them maliciously because, you know, the, our militia can take them out. Okay, great. But it's a prevailing attitude that grows, you know. So let's say we were to bomb a certain area and, and clear out, you know, a good number of them. The, the, the ideology and the thought behind it still lingers and still grows. And then, of course, other factions grow as a result of that. So how do you stop something like this? Well, their, their attempt to stop something like this, I guess, would be to wage war or put sanctions on these nations that spot, well, I won't say sponsor, but house these terrorists. So, for instance, the reason why we are in conflict with Iran in terms of a cold war, if you will, or tension, is because supposedly they've housed many terrorists. And so our relationship with them is strained because of who they house. And so therefore, by putting sanctions on them or having you know all types of issues with them, that's our way. Now, unless we go to war with them, I don't know how we're going to do anything. But at the end of the day, you can't defeat a gang 
of individuals who are spread out all over the world who don't come together as a military force with tank. Their, the, the, their method of warfare is just so different. But what I'm saying is, if you believe that these are legitimate paramilitary forces that aren't funded by the very nations that they're attacking, that's a whole nother topic. But I personally believe when you look at the history and the root of all of these organizations, they are funded. Don't forget, one of our major enemies at one time was Saddam Hussein, right? Correct. We said that he was one of the worst uh, 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 czars and dictators on the planet. But he had a strong relationship with the United States. We had financed him, given him, mili given him military weapons for years before he so-called turned on us. Same thing with Cuba. I mean, there's many examples of that. So what is an ally one day can become an enemy the next day. And so when you look at this a phenomenal book called uh, Hidden Hands, and it talks about the secret government behind what we know as our official government and how they have financed almost every major war and conflict because they had an alternative objective that most of us do not know about. So this whole concept of entering into a World War III where all the nations are pulled in, well, some would say that the powers that be want that to happen. And so these are strategic attacks that are used to pull these nations in to enter into a war so that their ultimate plan for a one world order will take place. Wow. Anthony? I, uh, this is their, what happened in Paris and, and all the people who died and so forth. This is their 9-11. Their so, I mean, right now, if you read the reports, they've already uh, struck back on some ISIS uh, targets and so forth. But as a people, this is going to have a ripple effect throughout, not just in Paris, but throughout different countries and so forth. So should we we that live here in America, should we be more on more alert? Should we be more concerned uh, as Christians? I know we should be prayerful. We should definitely be prayerful. But should we should we have our head on a swivel, per se, to use a football term? Well, I know that New York in particular is under alert right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're already considering what can happen if an attack were to take place there. All the major cities in the United States are under alert. Um, but, you know, within our system, there are codes or levels of uh, alert, like orange, red. I mean, it just goes higher and higher and higher. Right. So depending upon where you live, it could determine what the police is, you know, what type of um, watch they're on. But really, more so than us, the bordering nations of France. Now, keep in mind that the president said is a state of uh, emergency. Uh, he said that the entire country is under what they call, um, what's martial, the word I'm looking martial for? Martial law? They're under martial law, oh, right? Wow. And as a nation, they have never been in this place since the Nazis pulled them into the war uh, back in World War II. Mm -hmm. So they're experiencing something that they haven't experienced for a long time. They've even shut down their borders, which is a scary thing. Because if a major conflict takes place in America and they actually shut down the borders here, that means that not only can people from the outside come in, but people on the inside can't go out. And usually what happens, once they shut down the borders, they're looking for who? Terrorists. Right. And we know that in the United States, there's been so many of us who have been considered terrorists hmm. because we homeschool, because we believe in Jesus Christ. When you look at the FBI and their list of organizations that they consider terrorist organizations, you would be surprised how many churches, Bible-believing, believing in Jesus Christians are on those lists. Mm -hmm. It's more than the Klan. It's more than these militias that are hiding in the mountains. It's more than a quote-unquote nation of Islam. Just average people have been on this list. And so it, it, it's scary for Americans to know what would happen if this type of conflict happened here. So we're, Raquel, we're in the midst of an election. We, you know, you got Hillary Clinton and you got uh, Trump and Carson and so forth. So how important do you think this election is? Because this is going to shape our nation and how we deal with not just, lo you know, here in the United States, but how we deal with other countries. And, you know, Trump will say, let's blow everybody up. Right. And I, and I was going to say, I think that that's why it's very important, because people are looking to see uh, if there is an, a candidate that they can feel safe would, you know, carry out the, the wishes of the country or the citizens or, you know, wouldn't move 
fast but be very wise in right. how they move right. out. And so I think that everybody who has a opinion on that subject is being really scrutinized. And I know that they just had the Democratic um, uh, debate and they said that they really, a lot of them didn't have answers. And it's kind of premature, but still, I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be a big topic. Foreign policy is always going to be foreign policy whether there's a Republican, whether there's a, there's a Democrat, because you have to understand that no matter what side of the fence you, you're on, there's a constituency that they represent. And when it comes to what happens internationally, trust the leave, the agenda has already been set. And the president, whoever is elected, they are the biggest slave of us all because they have to follow the orders given to them. I'm telling you, folks, the only power that a dem that a president has is more on the you know domestic side, you know things that happen internally within our nation. But there's already an army of people who are already set up and designed to carry certain things out internationally. That's why you had a person like Kennedy who was killed. Right. Why? Because he bucked up against the system because he thought that he actually had power in this country as a president. So, Hassani, with you just saying that, am I, maybe I'm foolish to think that Obama actually did something by bringing relations back again with Cuba, or was that, are you saying that was already pre-designed and he's just, he's just the puppet on a string in a sense? I don't want to, I don't want to demonize or vilify or simplify any president, right. but I will say, even though a president operates from a bully pulpit and has say. You have to understand, he can't make any decision in of himself. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has veto rights and he could he could do all those types of things. Mm -hmm. But there is a system that you have to go through to get things done. And best believe, it, when you really study documentaries about presidents, they all have handlers. They yeah. all have a group of people who are telling them what to do, how to say it. If you think for one second, as articulate as President Obama is, as Clinton was or is when he was president, that they're crafting their own speeches, no, that they're no, you know, no. shame. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, Best I understand believe. they have writers. Of course they do. Yeah. Right. It's not just about how they craft words and how elegant it is, but policy that needs to be pushed, agendas that need to be you know pushed. All of that is already done behind the scenes. They they are there to be a spokesperson for the people that we don't even know about. That's a fact. Wow. That is so true. And so, okay, so let's say, and, and, and Anthony, I want you to chime in too. If you're a citizen and you've been hearing the story, and I believe there's some things that are going on in Kenya, there's this thing that's going on all over the world. Um, how would you feel? I mean, how do you address someone's concern that they are afraid? Is that for it? Yes. I thought you were asking Anthony that. Yeah, well, Anthony, Anthony, Anthony's <laughs> like Hassani. No, 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 no. All right, I'll I'll start off. I I lean on my Savior. My I lean on Jesus Christ. I'm like, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. I have there's a lot of stuff I have no control over, you know, personally or directly. But and for as far as my safety, there's the, there's a scripture that says a, 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 a thousand shall fall at your 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 right hand and ten thousand on your left or. But it right. not, it shall not come nigh you. Psalm so mm -hmm. whatever it is, whatever's going down, I'm trusting God no matter what. So I'm going to pray about things. I'm going to uh, pray for the people of Paris, you know, pray for this country and so forth. But ultimately, you could eat something and they, they find something in it and it's killing people. You, you just have to be on it every single day. You really got to talk to God every day. True, true. Granted. So, Hassani, from an expert opinion, you got people out there who they're hearing this, they're nervous, they're making, they're trying to figure out, how, do I not go to malls? Do I not go to Staples Center? Do I not go to Nokia? You know, do I not go to, you know, whatever stadium? What, what do I do to protect myself and my family? And should I live in fear? I think you should be vigilant and in prayer. And I think you should be cautious. I don't think that we should operate and live in fear because that's exactly what they want. They want people to be gripped in fear. They want people to be paranoid. But no, listen, you have to understand that the politics in, the, in our way of life in the United States is different in other parts of the world. So depending upon where you live and how you function, you know, what you do as an individual may be different. Like if I'm in the Middle East, then maybe I need to, you know, 
be more careful where I go because I know that there are forces in particular areas and I don't need to go. It's just like anything. I live in Atlanta. You live in L.A. Mm -hmm. You know your scene better than better than I do and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So you have to be just wise in everything that you do. And to Anthony's point, it's all about your relationship with God. I know several people, Christians, yes. who because they have a relationship with God, they did not wind up um, in the Twin Towers though they worked there or in the surrounding area that particular morning because God pulled at them. God gave them a message. God interfered yes. and something, something prevented them yes. from getting there. Mm -hmm. The train was delayed, whatever the case may be. So it all goes back to your relationship because that's where your safety is. That's excellent. That's, ac that's excellent. And, you know, um, I would say the same thing that, like I said, when I woke up that morning, I heard it. I was like, wow. And I had to get a grip and I had to realize that, you know, we already as Christians, we already know the end. We know we win. And like you said, the enemy is trying to punk us, which he does well because that's his job to do but we have to be more vigilant we have to really stay in our war rooms that movie just came oh, came flooding yeah, back to me yeah. that we need to have a room and a time of prayer that we can't go about our daily lives as usual right. that we can't right. take things for granted right. and like you said Anthony anything can be subject to taking your life away so you have to be able to cover yourself and cover your family and but don't you know go ahead in, in addition to prayer, you know, if we really study scripture, when Jesus went to the mountain to pray, he told his disciples to do what? Watch and, and pray. pray. Mm -hmm. Jokers was falling asleep. <laughs> they weren't on well, guard. That's true. Watch and pray. So many of us are falling asleep, meaning, yes, we're consciously awake, but we're unconscious. We're walking. We're like walking asleep, right? Or right. sleepwalking, if you will, right. because we're not paying attention. We're not researching. We're not studying. If you are willing to be sp to be spoon fed your information through all of these media sources and just trust everything that comes out of their mouths, you're not watching and you're not prayerful. So you have to do your own research. You have to be diligent, and you have to do what's best for your particular family. And I'll reference it again. You know, the fact that a couple of months ago, I think your church had you know, uh, uh, crisis management seminars. Mm -hmm. What would happen if earthquake. there's an earthquake? What would happen if there's a catastrophe? We have to be more vigilant in those areas. Okay, fine. We know spiritually what we need to do and who our father is, but what in the natural can we begin to do? How do we store up? What do we save? What do we begin to accumulate? What is our escape plan? Where do we go for safety? These things we need to consider. Well, on that topic, Kasani, you know, being built up in... in getting things done in the natural legally out out here i can go get a gun is that something that i didn't grow up around guns so it's not i'm not used to it the way other people are and so forth so it'd be a whole different thing for me but I, I technically i have the right to do it and it's kind of been rolling around in my mind a little bit i'm like do i i'm not asking you should i but should i <laughs> I mean, should you own a gun? Should should people consider that? Because it is your legal right. Let, let's consider this: Jesus and his disciples, right? They carry weapons. Matter of fact, there's a scripture where you can read where I don't know if it was Peter. I don't remember which one. He he drew his sword right. and cut off someone's ear. Yeah. Jesus places his ear back on his head. Right. You know, come on. he was able to rescue that man, but. He walked with dudes who were armed. I won't say dangerous, but they were armed and they were prepared for what should come. Don't forget, in the 60s, the churches had something called the Deacons of Defense. When all of these churches were being bombed and set on fire, there was an organization of deacons that carried weapons, not to kill, murder, and maim, right. but to protect their home. Mm -hmm. You know, the house of God has to be protected in prayer as well as sometimes physically with guns. So you, you look at... Um, Preachers of L.A., the controversial <laughs> bishop, right, who carries a Glock or a gun, yeah, whatever right. he carries. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you start thinking about it, you're like, okay, wow, it's starting to make sense that he's not trying to go out here killing folks. Right. But he understands that in the environment that he's in, sometimes it's necessary to have some type of physical protection to protect his wife, his children, his household, because that's required. We're in that day and age in America. Yeah, especially in the church. I mean, it used to be nobody would bring a gun in the church. You wouldn't dare try to take somebody's life in the church. Now, there are reports. I mean, this is happening again and again. And 
it, it's just it's crazy. And, and and then that brings up the question of gun laws. I mean, if mm. we all carry guns, are people just going to shoot each other because they have road rage? Yeah. I mean, are you yeah. going to shoot some teacher because she said something bad to your kid? I mean, so where do we? Where do we draw the line between protecting ourselves and endangering ourselves when it comes to gun laws, Hassani? That's a very good point. And this is a discussion that we can have probably a five-part radio (laughs) show series on because you can look at it from so many different perspectives. I mean, fine. If not a gun, there's so many people who are studying martial arts as a form of prevention from what? Violation. You've got to defend and protect yourself somehow. Listen, as a husband and a father. Right. It would be irresponsible for me not to learn anything, any form of self-defense. It's just like I have four girls. What happens if they eat something and choke on something? As a responsible father, I need to know the Heimlich so I could save my child. You know what I mean? Right. So so there's certain things that we need to do that are basic common sense things as a form of prevention and protection because we're in physical bodies, we're in an earthly suit, we're on this plane, and so there's physical things that we need to take authority over as well as spiritual things. That's good. I mean, you know, it's, it's you know, and as somebody was bringing up to my attention, that if you think about 20 years ago, terrorism, maybe let's say 30 years ago, terrorism really wasn't much. Right. Right. You know, so it wasn't our reality. It wasn't our reality. Okay. Our reality. Right. The but, United but, States didn't what? have to deal with it. As Listen, much. You, you know, what would be an interesting thing to do. What we should do on our show, bring uh, Jews who live in Israel oh. who, deal with, who deal with terrorism every day, every other day mm. and ask them how they live their lives, mm. how they protect themselves, how they stand on guard because they're living in this thing. That's great. You know that's what I mean? That yeah, that's, that's really good. And you you made me think about something else. I think that a lot of the, what has happened um, the last couple of days came as a result of the retaliation of the killing of the one ISIS leader who had beheaded multiple people. Mm-hmm. Um, and his name is Abu Nabil. And they killed him. You know, they did a raid. And a friend oh. of mine was saying, you know, what we fail to remember is that, um, and I'm not sure how it all went down. Maybe you guys can add. But the United States went in to raid the city that he was in and end up bombing the city. Okay. And so we don't we we were not hearing how many people died as a result of that situation. So then they actually go ahead and, and retaliate and now we're thinking that it's you know that they're doing something out of the ordinary when really they feel like you did this to our leader, you took us out, you bombed our innocent family members, and so it's your turn. Now Raquel that awesome bit of information you just shared. Are you going to typically find that on Fox, on NBC, <laughs> no. on C? You're not going to find that. Right. So this is why it, this is why when 9-11 happened, I remember the day like it was yesterday, because literally I'm right across the water from the buildings coming down. So we go to a high point in West Orange, New Jersey, and we can see it. We see the buildings. Wow. So this woman is standing next to us crying and weeping, and she's just like, why would they do this to us? They hate us because we're free. And I'm like, that was the most ignorant thing that any American could ever say. We are ignorant to our impact around the world. There's a term called collateral damage. Yes. So to your point, they go into a city, they drop a bomb. So fine, they kill who they were seeking to kill, but how many innocent lives were killed? Babies who had nothing to do with it. Right. Grown adult men and women who had nothing to do with it. Right. And now an entire city is pulverized because they were going to attack an enemy who right. was, a, I don't know, part of a terrorist organization. And so now, think about it. They don't have funds to rebuild like we do. That's why when you go into different parts of the world, ruins that took place 100 years ago still, there. still look like 100 years ago. That's right. You know that's so, right. That's so true. And so they and so as a result, the hostility grows. You got family members who are just hostile and angry. And then you got people who can't function like they used to. Hmm. And then they're saying, you know, and they're like, hey, we're sign us up. We're we're in. We're in. We gotta take them out. We gotta do what we need to do, take a few lives so they'll know how we feel, they'll understand what it feels like. And so that's I think what we're experiencing. But like Hassani says, you know, we if we don't know this, then we just think that these are bad people who are just you you know, you know, beating up on us or, or, or you're being a predator to the nation. I, one of the stats came out out of all of this that's gone down in Paris is they've talked about the different countries and how many citizens of the particular country have gone over to learn from ISIS. And I'm like, 
so hold on. You're a citizen of the U.S. You're a citizen of Paris. You're you're taking a flight. You're upset with your country, so you're gonna fly over, learn how to kill your people, come back. I'm like, and why are it. they letting these people back in the country? Or why? You know, in America, if you even look like you want to go over there, they're gonna arrest you. In Paris, they said in Paris, they were people. They were letting people go and come back. And I was just like, you got to be kidding me. That to me, that made no sense well, at all. Let, let me say this: in the United States. There's something called the School of America. The school. What is it called? The, the School. The School of the America. School of Americas. Where we train military organizations around the world in guerrilla warfare. Hmm. Okay? okay. We train them. So a lot of the guerrilla warfare in other countries, when they're actually you, you see them, like for instance in Iraq where they will go into a city and they'll black boot stomp a door down and run into a house and raid and pull people out and kill. We train people how to do that around the world. So that's why you have all of these foreign nations that are either friendly or considered enemies of our nation mm. who we are training. Look at the contradiction in that. Wow. So what I'm saying is there's more to it than what we're being Spoon fed. Okay. I'm a grown man. I don't want nobody feeding me. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Let me let my, me get my own information, huh? So, right. I stopped feeding my five year old when she was like two. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so why do you think so, that they would want to teach these people guerrilla warfare? That's a that's a topic for another show, Raquel. Oh, yes, yes, it's yes. too deep. Yes. It's too yes. Deep. I see. So it goes back to the whole notion of they want to instill fear. And so they need yeah. people to do this. I think that we need a historical paradigm shift. And we need to unlearn all that we have learned and begin to relearn. One thing that I've learned, maybe it's a pessimistic perspective, but the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. But what I realize is that everything that I have learned is a darn lie. Ah, it, it goes his back story. To the yeah, his story. And the, and the story is told by the victor, typically not the victim. The victim has a completely different account, completely different perspective. I mean, just look at the conflict that you typically have between Israel and Palestine. Now, Palestine is viewed as the great Satan, the most demonic, the most terroristic, this, that, and the other. But when you really look at the research and do your, you know, read up and use alternative news sources, you'll find that thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people have been killed in Palestine for every two or three Jews who are killed in Israel. So what I'm saying is, if you just rely on media sources, you would think that, you know, Israel as a state is innocent of all the atrocities, and somehow Palestine, they're just these evil, wicked people who have no soul. Right. And that's not the case. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It just, um, I don't, I don't, you know, my heart goes out to the people of Paris, to just the world, what's going on in the world. I mean, you've got people... You couldn't convince me to put on a vest. How do you convince somebody to put on a suicide vest? But you've been able to do this, and I don't know. And the thing about it, they said that the people, you know, they have eyewitnesses because there are people who have okay. survived the, the massacre. And um, they said that the, the men were, like, ruthless. They were, like, very focused on what they were wow. doing, and they were very skilled at what they were doing, and there was no second thought. Hmm. They would reload the gun, they said, like a professional, and just go at it. Keep going. So oh, it, it's just a hardening of their heart. And, you know, I, I think that everybody, because God created everybody, everybody comes from a good place. But it's amazing how things over time can harden your heart hmm. to the point where you will just sign up to take someone's life and not have any regret, but feel, feel justified. Let me tell you something. Um... When you really study the Hutus and the Tutsi war that took place in Rwanda, yeah. a lot of the killers, the murderers that annihilated just countless people were like seven and eight year old boys. What? And they wow. trained them and indoctrinated them and put a weapon in their uh, hands. They were killing their own brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. I mean, so it's called mind control. Yes. And you can crack into anybody's psyche and turn them inside out and turn them into just cold-blooded killers and that's exactly what we're producing not just us but this this exists around the world and it's all a part of satan's grand agenda because you have to understand that <laughs> mass murder and annihilation is almost like a sacrifice to satan 
If you look at it from that perspective, it is. it's not it's the same. And there's a certain vibrational frequency that is created from the emotion of fear. So if I can kill and maim a group of people and blast that all over the world for the world to see, and now everybody's in fear, you know, the enemy eats on it. It's like it's like nutrition to the enemy. It gives them power. It strengthens them. And that's how they're able to seriously wage war and defeat a lot of us. And so when you realize the tricks of the enemy, you don't have to fall victim to it. And that's why I said we need to watch and pray and understand what's going on and be vigilant and not only know the enemy's tactics, but know the tactics of God. That's good. That's good. So, Hassani, I'm sure that your kids are, uh, some of them, are at an age where they're going to school and schools may be discussing this or they may be hearing this. What do you tell your kids? Because there's some people listening going, what do I tell my kids? You know, I, I may be okay. I may be able to pray myself to a place of comfort and peace. But how do I help my kids get to that level? Hmm. You just have to tell your children the truth. I'll give you a very simple example. Perfect. Perfect. Take something like Halloween. Okay. Which is something that many churches and many schools support. <clears throat> and every single year, this can everywhere, people wearing costumes. Mommy, why can't we celebrate Halloween? Oh, man. Right? Yeah. Rather than saying, well, we just don't because it's evil. No. We sit them down. We share the history with them. We let them know. This is why we don't celebrate it, because these types of things happen. And so when it comes to war, when it comes to terrorism, when it comes to atrocities around the world, we're very frank with our children. Now, we share it in a way that they can understand. It's got to be palatable to right, them. Right. I mean, we have a five-year-old and we have an 11-year-old and ages in between. So we have to know what we can and what we should say. But we don't, we don't protect them in the sense of covering them to such a degree that we keep them ignorant of what's happening because they need to be the wise one. So what if something breaks out in their school? We've talked about this. What if an act of terrorism takes place in your school? What do you do? Mm-hmm. You know, we have those conversations and we need to. Mm-hmm. We need to. That's so I would say tell the truth, but you can't tell the truth if you don't know the truth. Yeah, that's the truth. And that's the truth. And I think, and, and I know, unfortunately, we would love to keep our kids, you know, to a point where they're innocent and they don't have to deal with stuff on this level. I mean, as kids, we didn't have to deal with a lot of this. Right. But it's um, but it's good for them to know that who they can trust in and that, um, you know, that things you know, are happening, but that God could still protect them and that they need to be on their knees just as well as the the, the parents and just believe for the best, you know. You know, there's a, a commercial uh, that recently was out that showed two parents talking. It was like, oh, well, how do you protect your kid? And they showed a picture of the kid and the parents got the kid wrapped in some big bubble wrap. You know? <laughs> Put him in a bubble. <laughs> it was like, that's, that's it. You know, it's like, how do you protect your kid? It's, hey. You can't do that. You I mean, and as a parent, I and especially I know Hassani has four girls. It must it must be an interesting feeling too, mm-hmm. because you want to know that you can protect your kids. You know. Yeah, we we do. And 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 with that being said, I know we got to go. Uh, we're also we have been we've become more careful over the years uh, to watch what we say in front of those kids mm-hmm. because I'm telling you, when you're young, you're so impressionable. I remember when. We went to uh, Iraq war with Iraq. Yeah. I was a senior in high school at the time. I thought the world was coming to an end because we were <laughs> at war. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not going to live past, like, 18. Right. We've been dealing with little children, and they see this type of stuff on television. It, it could be traumatizing to a child. You're right. So that's why I said you have to know how to protect and cover, but you have to know what to share, mm-hmm. you know, for their own safety. Because at the end of the day, they could be in school, you're at work, your hours of, you know, you just have to prepare them for certain things that they can do within their own ability. That's so true. That's wisdom. That's, that is wisdom. Yeah. That is wisdom. So I think that, you know, we've come to the end of our program, but I'm hoping that people understand that it's not what you may think it is it just may not be an attack on us because you know they hate us and we're united states and we're the spoiled brats and they don't because they're jealous i mean there could be actual a story behind all of it that we have not been willing to accept or we won't fully know the details it could be uh as hasani said it could be very um deliberate to create fear and um so what we want everybody to know is no matter what it is that you don't have to fear that you know that especially if you know jesus christ is your lord and personal savior you have someone who's already set the end in motion 
He already knows the end. So if you're worried out there and you don't know what to do, get on your knees, get some yeah. information, read the word, build your spirit man up. Because a lot of times that's a sign that your spirit man needs a little building up. You need to you need to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And then build your 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 mental capacity up to understand how this all plays out from the from the, the new sources that may not be popular but may be giving you extended versions of information. And um, um, and then share with your kids very boldly and say, hey, we're going to do the best that we can to use wisdom in our household. And we're going to do the best that we can to use wisdom outside of our households. And we're going to leave everything else up to God. Yeah, I know uh, just real quick, technology wise, uh, there's an app called Periscope, which allows you to live stream. So after this happened, after I'd heard about it, immediately I'm on Periscope and there are people in Paris streaming what's going on and the effects and, and so forth. And it's showing you exactly where different things took place and what's happening to individuals and so forth. So uh, you talked about that unfilteredness, you know, because there's somebody out there interviewing people, asking right. them what happened. Right. So, so you're getting Paris, information from regular directly, citizens. Directly, yeah, from the citizens. So. Yeah. And there's then more I. more seeing that than it's seeing in Fox, MSNBC, ABC, and all the rest of those three letter words. And tell us, what is the international source of news that you use? You told me before. Is it Brit what is the international source that you trust? There's a bunch. Uh, I can send a list, but to be honest with you, what I'll do is I'll do a general search of the topic okay. and I'll read everything. Okay. So, what, so whether I'm reading uh, um, Russian Times, whether I'm reading French news, because if you read those two media sources, you're going to get two different stories, right. unless they're part of a large conglomerate, right? right? Because you do have sources of uh, conglomerates, and they're all sharing the same information. Yes. But the alternative would be the independent news sources right that are independent uh, news that's, sources. there you go and a lot of a lot of them on the internet okay and you just do a regular search and they come up or do you have to put in independent news source for no do a regular search because they're because a lot of them are blogs right a lot of them are newspapers that are online if i see seeing any of the major ones i just pass right by those yes and i'll go and i'll start searching and see what's out there Lovely. absolutely Lovely. i mean i this alex jones right so i'll go to that site a lot because they have an alternative perspective on what's taking place in the United States. Alex so, Jones, okay. AlexJones.com? Alex Jones, yeah. You just type in AlexJones.com and, and this site will pop up. Lovely. Okay, and then I do want to do a shout out because we did have one uh, local person who we know was killed. 23-year-old right. student out of Cal State Long Beach yeah. was over there on an exchange program. Um, I think they sent 20... 28 right, students like and she was in a cafe and she was one of the kids that was killed mm -hmm. and her name is Nohimi I believe that's how you pronounce it Nohimi Gonzalez mm -hmm. and um, she was one of the first people in her family to go to college and she was there I'm sure they were just beaming uh, of uh, proudness to, to have you know the daughter to be a part of the family and to be able to go uh, across um, go to, yeah go yeah. overseas to, yeah. uh, it's just it's wow. just amazing so they did a, a visual for her okay. about an hour ago and I just want to do a shout out to her family that we're in prayer with you and that we're sorry for your loss um, and we as a community and we're not one thing I want to say too is that we're not pointing fingers at Muslim people because we uh -huh. know that there are some Muslim people who are good Good hearted. They follow right. their beliefs that don't include, you know, being violent or, right. or, 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 you know, killing people. And so I remember there was one in this, um, the, the university issued a, um, a, a public statement. statement on Facebook. And this one student piped in and said, you know, I'm sorry. And for all Muslim people, we're sorry. But please don't take this out on us mm. because we are law abiding citizens who mm. love America, who are happy to be here, who are living the life according to the Muslim religion. And it doesn't include killing. Wow. And he, ISIS is not. It, 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 ISIS and Muslim are not synonymous is what she was it's saying. Not, that's like saying. The Klan and Christians are synonymous. Oh, Skinheads ooh. and Christians are synonymous. Ooh. Those are Christian so-called organizations. Right, right. And so we want to make sure we highlight that because during these, these next couple of days, I'm sure they're going to be profiled. 
I'm sure. Yeah. Between airports and schools and, you know, anything that they would do on a public level, they're going to be, you know, profiled. And mm. black people know about profiling. Uh, you know, <laughs> Latins know about profiling. I mean, we all know about profiling, so we don't want to do that. We just want to be prayerful. We want to be alert. Yeah. I believe God can tell us who those evil people are that are in our midst. And so we just need to be more vigilant in that sense. Yeah. Amen. Okay. So we are really enjoyed giving you information. Hopefully, you guys took a bit of wisdom from Hassani and Anthony and myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget, it's not your abilities that reveal your true strengths, it's your choices. Good night. Yeah.